Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next series of my advice here. Now today's advice is going to be targeted towards students who are maybe just starting their college or university career, or maybe you're partway through your bachelor's degree. So today I'm going to be talking about plus one accelerated master's programs and talk about some of the trade-offs with doing them. In general, I encourage students to go this route. If you're in university, it could be a great way to save yourself some time. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the bullet points. Again, uh, this question comes up of should you do a plus one master's program and just some things to consider. So, and this is sort of focused at engineers, software engineers, and this might apply to other fields as well. But again, I'm coming from this with a computer science engineering degree. And in general, uh, what I'm comparing this to is doing another master's program later. So the idea with a plus one program is usually in your third or fourth year as a university student, you can start taking master's level courses and they'll count towards your bachelor's degree or your master's degree. Or in some universities, you just end up taking some extra courses that again, compress your degree into getting a master's degree in just one year. Now, why is this important? Well, a master's degree typically takes two years, sometimes longer depending on the program or if there are internship opportunities, which I always encourage students to take to get experience and kind of find out what they're passionate about. But in general, with that in mind, if you have a plus one program, you're saving one year of your working career, one year of your life, <laughs> if you want to think about it, uh, if you are going to do that in school uh, full time later. So in general, it can be a real time saver. So some pluses of this, again, if you're in university now, this might be more meaningful for you, but it's another year with your friends. So, you know, socially, or if you have obligations uh, that require you to be in the area, um, you know, it's another way to spend a year in university studying and getting an advanced degree, which I think can be a competitive advantage later on because you're learning more stuff. Uh, you might have other opportunities. And again, I think that's an important part of your own personal development, your social development, again, being around uh, your friends and just growing uh, in in the university okay now that's gonna be a little bit different for everyone that's maybe not the most important thing but just something to consider uh for folks but you know that kind of goes with a point uh below it that it's generally easier to continue school right if you're with your friends and you have sort of that momentum it's easier to stay in that lifestyle okay so not just so much about uh, my friends are doing it or whatever uh, but this idea that when you're say in your early 20s and you're in university it's a little bit easier to be in school versus if you go back in your 40s not that other people don't do it but i think there are different uh strains on your life a different momentum that people are going through um you know the sort of seasons of life or stages of life that people are in that can make it a little bit easier if you again continue and have that sort of uh momentum uh earlier on okay and generally speaking plus one programs are something you complete while you're doing your bachelor's degree anyways so again it just sort of makes sense here now something to consider though on the other side of this with your plus one program is you're probably paying the rate of the master's tuition or the bachelor's tuition usually there's an incentive uh, for this and this sort of works uh in in two ways if you're going to do a master's program maybe at a different school and transfer um or otherwise um you know go back to school later that's going to be two years so that means two years of tuition you are potentially paying here OK, so that's just something to consider here in this equation of should you do the plus one uh, program. Um, so with that in mind, though, it becomes this sort of trade off of how you would want to complete uh, an advanced degree, a master's degree. Um, so oftentimes, if you go work at what tends to be larger tech companies, not always, I've seen startups as well, they'll offer tuition uh assistance programs that usually allow you to uh, be a part-time student at an online or maybe a night school or maybe even depending on how flexible the company is during the day you can take one class per semester and earn your degree part-time that's a great thing that you can do uh, if you work at a university you can probably do this as well and you can get the tuition uh, paid for by the employer which i always encourage folks to do if you can save money um, when it comes to going to university. So that's one thing to consider. With the plus one, that tends to be less of an option. Usually you are a full-time student because you are 
uh, accelerating yourself in that one year. Okay, so there is some economic considerations you need to think about. You know, if you're supported by others that can help you with payments or you have some savings, uh, again, maybe the plus one makes sense because, again, you're you're going to get one more year of experience, one more year of salary that might end up offsetting that cost anyways. Uh, but I always encourage folks if you they're going to graduate with a bachelor's degree in something like software engineering, and they can go to an employer that'll pay for their tuition to take that opportunity. Again, it's a free education. Again, it's easier, as mentioned, to do it earlier on when your friends are in school, when you know you're used to being in school, <laughs> sort of having that uh, mentality. You're not moving on to the next uh, season of your life. Um, I would also say though that for folks, um, and I've known a few folks who actually complete their uh, bachelor's degree, I'll move out to here in a second, um, in three years because they came in with a bunch of college credits, you know, through their high school or, uh, you know, their, their secondary school, they're able to take some extra classes, then it can be a good idea to just complete the master's and bachelor's in essentially four years. Uh, I unfortunately didn't learn about my plus one programs until you know, later on. So that's why I hope you just bring awareness to this. But if you can do that four years, uh, that's probably not a bad thing to do either. So if you're doing a three plus one, three years plus one year for the master's, that's great. I think it's an easy decision and you don't have to think as much about this uh, just going to work. Just enjoy those four years, learn as much as you can. So that gets me down to this next point of, you know, is it worth it to do a master's degree in computer science? That's actually got to be a separate video. I think if folks are interested in that, I'll talk about advanced degrees, PhDs, some things to think about. But I will say is the master's degree, what's nice is one, if you're transitioning to a different field, so maybe you did some science or non-science and want to do a master's uh, in computer science, there are programs that can help you, you know, transition, and um, that makes it worth a master's. Uh, you know, and that might be a two-year program, but specifically, I'm talking about just today a plus one master's program. And what you'll notice that's a little bit different from your bachelor's, at least this tends to be the case in the uh, United States, that you're taking during the master's portion just computer science classes or just whatever, you know, engineering or science classes that, that you're taking for that degree. So it tends to be more focused. You tend to have fewer courses, uh, but they're graduate level courses. So you get a little bit more rigorous study in those courses in a focused area. So that can often be a very enjoyable time. You're studying what you've chosen to study and just focused on that. So that's uh, a nice thing about the plus one. So again, if you're doing it four plus one or even three plus one, if you're lucky enough to have some, uh, you know, extra credits, <laughs> you can accelerate. That's not a bad option. Okay. Um, so then I would encourage you, uh, if you're enjoying your degree of study, but just need more, or maybe you're at a big enough school that has lots of interesting courses and you want to specialize a little bit before you go in the workforce. That's not a bad idea. Um, so some other things that I can think about here with the masters as well, with doing the four plus one, um, and being sort of more focused on courses in your degree, you do have to consider maybe what those courses are, what advantage you'll get out of it. You know, again, it might be worth going to another university if there aren't other interesting classes that you can take. And then again, you might want to go the have your employer help you pay for the university uh, costs later on. Um, most of the time, it's probably a good idea to go to different universities uh, for advanced degrees like PhDs, for instance, because you'll get different ways of thinking about problems, different emphasis, meet different folks and so on. Um, but for the master's portion, if there's enough interesting coursework uh, that you think you can get out of your same university again, you can go for the four plus one uh, or the plus one program here, three plus one for some folks. Um, so the last thing I'll just touch upon uh, that came to mind here with a plus one program is, or, you know, accelerated bachelor's, master's, these programs have all sorts of different names. Again, I, I just want you to know these exist and to think about it if you're an incoming student or somebody in a degree program right now, is if you're going to go into a PhD program later, I haven't found in general the plus one to accelerate time to graduation when it comes to your PhD. It just sort of depends. Oftentimes when you do a PhD, you'll have different requirements. There might be fixed courses at that university that you must take, for instance, regardless if you have a master's. 
Um, so I haven't found any correlation. There might be. It might just depend on the school. So if your goal of doing a plus one is that it'll accelerate you for the next stage for a PhD, just make sure you've carefully done your research or have talked to somebody who's in a PhD program and can kind of confirm that for you uh, for whatever degree you're doing. So those were just a few thoughts. I'd be interested to hear folks' comments if they've gone through this process. Uh, and of course, I'd be uh, happy to answer uh, what I know from, from my experience and from uh, my own uh, path here. And if folks are curious about that, I'm sure to uh, share some advice at some point, but please let me know <laughs> with that. And overall, I think it's a benefit if you can do the plus one and save yourself uh, a year of time from doing the masters. Now, that's not always an option. Uh, again, I try to optimize folks, though, however, for um, if your employer can pay for it or whoever, uh, that's also a really good option to uh, be getting working experience and uh, a degree, essentially. Learning more is never going to be a, a bad idea, uh, in my opinion. Whether you need that in a university or a formalized program, Again, it's going to depend on your needs, what field you're going into, what skills you're you're building. Uh, for instance, again, that's a, a longer uh, nuanced discussion. Uh, but again, these these plus one programs, I think, are, are nice and something you should just look for and see if it's available. Talk with an advisor at your university or college and see what's available for you. See what's out there. So folks, with that said, I hope this is a useful piece of advice. I hope you now know that there exist accelerated uh, master's degree programs at some universities. Even if there isn't one at your university, sometimes you're able to team up with neighboring schools. Again, stuff I didn't know about, so hopefully you know about it too and it's helpful. And feel free to leave your comments in the discussion below. I'd be really curious to hear about other people's path who have pursued this, why it was worth it, why it wasn't worth it, and so on. Let's just get the dialogue going. All right, folks, with that said, thank you for your time and attention, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.